The Bake Shop Ghost by Jacqueline K. Ogburn, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. Miss Cora Lee Merriweather ran the best bake shop in these parts, maybe even in the whole state. The chocolate in her Mississippi mud pie was darker than the devil's own heart. Her sponge cake was so light, the angels kept hoping it would float up to heaven. No birthday was complete without a Merriweather layer cake with her special buttercream frosting. Cora Lee must have poured all her sweetness into her work because there wasn't much sweet about her looks. She had a lemon pucker mouth and hair scraped back into a hard little bun. Most folks hardly noticed her looks though. She was seldom seen anywhere except behind the bake shop counter. Few looked up from the glass fronted cases filled with fluffy meringue pies, glistening fruit tarts, flaky strudels, and most of all, cakes. Layer cakes, sheet cakes, cakes with glazes, cakes with fillings, cakes with frosting finer than Irish lace, chocolate cakes, white cakes, tiny petit fours, and towering wedding cakes. When Cora Lee died, the whole town turned out for the funeral. No one cried until the preacher read out the bake shop menu and everyone realized that all those luscious desserts were now only sweet memories. Coralie didn't have any family, so the Merryweather Bake Shop was sold. Gerda Stein was the first buyer. She made fine strudel and good cakes although not quite up to the Merryweather standards. A baker's day begins soon after midnight so that the cases are filled with fresh goods when the shop opens. Her first night in the shop, Gerda had trouble with the ovens. Everything came out scorched. Ah, these old ovens are as cranky as Coralie, Gerda muttered. The next night, the refrigerator was broken the milk and butter had spoiled. Gerda was scrubbing up the mess when she heard footsteps in the upstairs apartment where Coralie used to live. She listened nervously for a moment, but the footsteps stopped, so she went back to her cleaning. Something clanked behind her. Slowly, Gerda turned around. A misty figure with hair pulled back in a hard little bun glared at Gerda then shrieked, get out of my kitchen, Gerda got. The for sale sign was back in the window that afternoon. Coralie Merriweather is haunting this place, Gerda told everyone. Federico Spinelli bought the shop next. No such things as ghosts, he said. Besides, what ghost could resist my cannolis, my rum cake, my sweet chocolate eclairs? The next morning, Frederico looked like a ghost himself as he staggered out the front door. He was drenched in confectioner's sugar like a giant powdered donut. Sophie Kristoff thought the shop was perfect for creating her cakes topped with marzipan decorations. Fruits, flowers, and small animals molded out of the dyed almond paste were her claim to fame. At sunrise, Sophie burst out the door, splattered with egg yolk and shells. Three pink marzipan pigs and a bunch of marzipan grapes came flying out right behind her. After that, the Merryweather bake shop stood empty. The M and the B of the gold leaf lettering in the window flaked off. The shelves grew gray with dust. Years passed. Annie Washington had been the pastry chef on a cruise ship. She fell in love with the shop the minute she stepped in the door. Just what I want, a kitchen that doesn't rock up and down. She even liked the apartment upstairs. A bucket of bleach, some cans of paint, and I'll have this place ship shape in no time, Annie said. She scrubbed and polished, washed and waxed, primed and painted. The ovens gleamed and the cases sparkled. She unpacked her equipment, 
her mixing bowls, cake molds, and recipe books. That night, Annie hummed as she assembled the ingredients for a batch of puff pastry. About midnight, footsteps creaked overhead, but Annie paid no attention. A cold wind swept the room, but Annie kept working her dough. A stack of mixing bowls went crashing to the floor. Annie dusted off her hands and turned around. A tall white figure with a lemon pucker mouth stood next to the work table. Annie smiled. Miss Coralie Merriweather, I've been expecting you. Coralie frowned. Get out of my kitchen. Annie crossed her arms. This is my kitchen now, she announced. Hovering utensils whirled through the air to crash into the wall. Annie didn't flinch. I've been told you were the best baker ever in this town, maybe even in the state, she said. Now, let me tell you something. I was the best pastry chef to ever sail on the Sea Star cruise ships. No typhoon, tsunami, or shipwreck ever stopped me from baking, and I never leave a kitchen until I'm done. She turned her back on the astonished ghost. Cora Lee wasn't flummoxed for long. She let out a shriek that cracked the window pane. Annie kept on rolling out her dough. Cora Lee rose up through the counter into the middle of the puff pastry, making a most horrible face. Annie slapped a slab of butter on top of the pastry and folded it up, ghost and all. Cora Lee began breaking eggs, a dozen at a time. Grim-faced, Annie scrubbed them up. The battle went on all night, neither baker giving an inch. At the crack of dawn, Coralie clawed open a 50-pound bag of flour, creating a blizzard that gave them both sneezing fits. Enough, Annie cried. What do you want? What can I do so you'll let me work in peace? Coralie stared through the swirling flour, then smiled a tight little smile. Make me a cake, she said. Make me a cake so rich and so sweet, it will fill me up and bring tears to my eyes. A cake like one I might have baked, but that no one ever made for me. Then you'll leave me to my work? No more pranks, said Annie. The kitchen will be yours, Coralie agreed. Piece of cake, Annie said. At the stroke of midnight, Coralie appeared in the kitchen. For the first time in years, the shop was buttery and warm with the scent of fresh baking. Please be my guest, Annie said, motioning to a place setting of fine china and silver. Coralie sat, shook out the linen napkin, and placed it in her lap. Annie uncovered the first offering, a tiramisu covered with whipped cream and sprinkled with cocoa. She carefully cut a slice, adding a sprig of mint on the side. Cora gave a small nod of approval and took a small bite. Hmm, the cheese is a bit bland, the ghost said. Annie took a small slice for herself as Cora Lee finished off the cake. Annie decided Cora Lee was right about the cheese. I'll bet you've never had a moon cake before, Annie said as she lifted the next cover. An entire Chinese Olympic diving team cried when they tasted this cake. It's made with red bean paste. Cora Lee took a half moon bite. Can't say that I've ever tasted one before, but this doesn't bring tears to my eyes. Still, she ate the rest. Annie presented cake after cake and Cora Lee devoured them all. She showed no sign of being full, and her eyes hardly blinked, much less shed a tear. At sunrise, Coralie said, You're a good baker, Miss Washington, but I'll not leave until you've baked me a cake to fill me up and bring tears to my eyes, a cake like one that I might have baked, but that no one ever made for me. And so it went. Annie made every kind of cake she knew, she made white cake, chocolate cake, fruit cake, spice cake, cheese cake, carrot cake, cake with nuts, cake with candy, cake from Asia, cake from Argentina, 
cakes from Vienna, Paris, and Rome. She made torts and tarts, bobkas and bunts, pound cake and panforte. Each time, Coralie would sample the offering and remark on its quality before finishing it. Annie came to respect the ghost's judgment. Sometimes Coralie would help out a bit as Annie worked. Still, Annie began to fear that she would be stuck forever making cakes for the hungry ghost. After a month and hundreds of cakes, Annie had run out of recipes. She went to the library looking for inspiration. In a slim volume of town history, she found a section on Cora Lee and the Merriweather Bake Shop. When she had finished reading, she knew exactly what kind of cake to bake. At midnight, as she had for the past month, Cora Lee appeared in the kitchen. Her place was set with china and silver, but there was just one covered cake on the counter. Well, have you made me my cake? asked Coralie. Yes, Miss Merriweather, I believe I have, Annie replied. She lifted up the cover and tilted the cake toward the ghost. Across the top, in piped icing, it read, Happy birthday, Coralie. The ghost looked up at Annie, her eyes brimming. How did you know? I found out that today is your 100th birthday and you grew up an orphan, said Annie. Besides, whoever makes cake for the baker? With her finest knife, Annie cut a slice of the chocolate layer cake with buttercream frosting and served it to Coralie. Coralie ate her slice, tears trickling down her cheeks. When Annie offered her another, the ghost said, I do believe I'm full. The two bakers sat quietly for a moment. Coralie rose into the air. It's your kitchen now. I'll keep our bargain and leave you in peace. Wait, said Annie. I'd like to show you the new menu. She handed Coralie a menu card. The top line read, Washington and Merriweather Bake Shop. Coralie's lemon pucker mouth broke into a huge smile. What do you say, asked Annie. Humph said Coralie. Since I'm the senior partner, it should be Merriweather and Washington. Oh no, it's my kitchen now, you sly old ghost, said Annie. Now the Washington and Merriweather Bake Shop is busier than ever. The old folks say the cakes are almost as good as Coralie's. Of course, they don't know she still bakes many of them. And every year, the shop's finest, most luscious, most beautiful birthday cakes are the ones that Cora Lee and Annie bake for each other. Snip, snap, snout, now this tale's told out.